All right, guys, we got a couple NBA playoff games tonight. And here to tell you who they recommend to build your lineups around, we got DraftKings contributor Kenny Ducey and RotoWire's Nick Whalen. This is Building Blocks, my guy. Kenny, start us off. Who would you build your lineup around at guard? I'm going to go with the man formerly known as Pandemic P, Paul George. Yeah, he's passed along that title to Chris Porzingis now because he was clearly uh, one of the best players in that Mavericks series. He has been playing lights out in the last two games. Of course, game six and game seven against the Mavericks were, were must-win games, 44 minutes a game. But you can't argue with the fact that this guy is just shooting the basketball so much better. We know that he's a fantastic scorer. He's gone over 50 DraftKings fantasy points in each of the last three games. And it, it's going to be a theme for me on this slate. I'm going to attack the Hawks defense. The Hawks defense right here is the worst defense on this slate in my, or excuse me, not the Hawks defense. The Jazz defense is very good. Uh, I am going to attack the Hawks defense later. But no, Paul George is playing lights out basketball right now. And uh, I, I have to roster him here. And he's just making me think crazy thoughts the way he's playing basketball currently. Uh, Nick Whalen, who must you roster at guard? I do like the Paul George call, but I want to save a little bit of money. Uh, maybe get Paul George in my lineup alongside this guy. And that's Bogdan Bogdanovich, who's at 6,800. Uh, I think a really affordable price for a guy that doesn't necessarily have a super high ceiling, but his floor has been incredibly high, not just in these playoffs, not just over the last couple of weeks of the regular season, but basically since the all-star break or since he came back from injury, I think he has been Atlanta's second best player and certainly their second most important player behind Trey Young. And I think if we see Philadelphia really sell out to stop Trey Young, who burned them for 30 plus and a double double in game one, you know, maybe we, we see more Matisse Thibel kind of shadowing Trey Young, forcing him to give the ball up. I think the guy who Atlanta is going to have to trust more is Bogdanovich. And he's been super confident all throughout these playoffs. He's been, uh, you know, more than happy to take big shots down the stretch. Uh, I, I think he's, you know, kind of had an underrated season, got off to a slow start, didn't really know his fit. They had all these moving pieces. And, you know, some of the injuries they've had to guys like Herter and, and DeAndre Hunter have kind of freed things up for Bogdanovich. And like I said, he's clearly asserted himself as their number two option. So if Trey Young pulls back at all in game two, I think it's Bogdanovich that inherits some of that usage. Uh, Nick, take us to forward. You're building block at this position, please. I think you got to go Kawhi. I, I don't know how you could turn away from Kawhi Leonard, who had 60 plus DraftKings points in his final two games. Uh, against the Dallas Mavericks. Obviously, the Utah Jazz defensively are a completely different beast. Um, you know, for, for as bad as the Clippers were on defense at times in that series, Dallas was just as bad. So you have to take that into account. But you know, even, even with the Clippers controlling uh, those last few games uh, against the Dallas Mavericks, Kawhi's up over 40 minutes per game. That's not something you necessarily see with him all that frequently. So the knee seems to be healthy. The quad seems to be healthy. Um, and he looks locked in. You know, those first two games against Dallas, it, it just didn't look like the Kawhi Leonard that we're used to, but man, when that guy is at 100%, he is pretty much unstoppable getting to the rim. He's a great free throw shooter. He hits everything in the mid range. And if the three point shot is falling, you know, he has a case to be the best player in the league. So I like Kawhi at 9,900. Uh, and then quick shout out to Tobias Harris at 8,300, really quiet double double uh, in game one. But uh, again, if, if you're looking at, you know, kind of the Trey Young equivalent in Philly, if Joel Embiid, you know, takes a step back in game two, I think it's Harris who needs to step up. Uh, Kawhi, most expensive forward on the slate, 9,900. Then it's that big drop-off, 8-3 to Harris. Kenny, is there a way you can actually turn away from Kawhi? Yeah, sh shout out to Tobias Harris. That was great wording by Nick. No, <laughs> there is no way that I am turning away from Kawhi Leonard. I was fully prepared to talk about him. And look, the Jazz defense, which is what I was going to say in the Paul George answer, the Jazz defense against the Grizzlies was sneaky bad. Uh, the Jazz relied on their defense all season long, had one of the best in the league, 115 defensive rating against the Memphis Grizzlies team. That, come on, man. You, you're telling me that Grayson Allen is going to cause problems in a small ball lineup for you. Uh, they did not defend as well as they could have. I think the Clippers here are, uh, you know, they're reasonably priced considering the, you know, uh, the, the Jazz defense is, uh, is still being – factored in Kawhi Leonard at $9,900 is my favorite player on the slate. When you look at the last series for Kawhi, he had one of his best playoff series ever. We were talking about this guy, what's going on with him. You know, he was a, he was a must fade every night in DFS for, for most of the second half of the season. And it was because he was resting up for this series. Apparently uh, he, he shot the highest percentage he's ever shot in a playoff series of 61.2%. His, his scoring output, which was ridiculous at 32.1 points per game was the, was the second highest ever or third highest ever uh, second in rebounds. This guy's just been absolutely on fire from a fantasy perspective, stuffing the stat sheet. 
and I can't not play him against the Jazz defense that I'm just not really trusting right now. Uh, I'm kind of bearish on. So he is definitely going to be, in my opinion, the top scorer on the fantasy slate. And so certainly because of that, I got to build around. All right. Who do you think you got to have in your lineup if you're going to build around a center, Kenny? So for me, it's I'm sticking in the same game. I know that they're are probably going to be a lot of points scored in that Hawks Sixers game because the Hawks pushed the pace to a ridiculous tempo. But I, I look, if you're looking at centers here, Rudy Gobert is still under $8,000 and he's coming off a, a few pretty good games against the Memphis Grizzlies. And he was able to exploit, you know, the Grizzlies. Valanciunas is a good center, but the Grizzlies all season long haven't been like the best rebounding team. Uh, I was really impressed with how he turned it on for the postseason. And when you look at a Clippers team that doesn't have Serge Ibaka right now, they're kind of undersized. They're not playing Zubats. So they're, they're just playing really small ball lineups. They like to put Marcus Morris down there uh, at, at the five at times. I think that Rudy Gobert should be able to bully some of these front court players for the Clippers. And because of that, I think that he should post a lot of points. So I think he should get a lot of rebounds. And it, it look, the Jazz, they've shown you that they don't really care if you're going to play small ball. They're going to still have Rudy Gobert out there for 35 plus minutes a game. I think that the matchup is pretty good here for Gobert. And he should just gobble up a lot of rebounds. And that should be enough to, to really hit value and then some. Who's your favorite at the five, Nick? I do like the Gobert call, but I'm going to go cheaper again here. Look at John Collins. And, and a lot of this is just like how striking this price is. $5,600. Uh, that's like almost $2,000 cheaper than he was a month ago. Uh, and obviously there's a reason for that. You know, John Collins has, has kind of taken a backseat uh, as the Hawks have leaned more heavily on, on Trey Young and Bogdanovich. But man, that's only $200 more than Reggie Jackson, which just does not seem right. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think John Collins maybe has the floor that we thought he did coming into the season. That was pretty clear right away. But at this price, he has a really good chance, you know, to hit 5X or even 6X value. You're not really asking for that many DraftKings points. He doesn't have to have a, you know, 60-point night to hit that kind of value when you're when you're priced like a mid-tier player. So I do like John Collins. I think if you can build around Collins and Bogdanovich, then that allows you, you know, to have a ton of flexibility. You can get Embiid in your lineup alongside with those guys. You can get Trey Young. You can get Kawhi Leonard. Tobias Harris. Um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't exactly say I'm building my lineup around John Collins, but I think at that price, he's a great building block. Uh, Nick, very quick here. You're building block at value if you wanted to go that route. I like Marcus Morris. He's the hero of game seven against Dallas, seven threes in that game. Um, obviously, you're not going to expect that night tonight, but he has 35 plus DraftKings points in two of the last three. He's playing a ton of minutes. They need him defensively uh, against this Jazz team. So Marcus Morris uh, is the guy that I'll be signing in. Kenny, quickly. Seth Curry, uh, he's only $5,000. He's been getting a lot of minutes here, 36 minutes in game one. And the Hawks defense, I mean, no, maybe no DeAndre Hunter here. It could be pretty good pretty good to attack. I think the price is right here on the, uh, the Curry that cost Daryl Morey $75,000. 